Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, on the other side of the ocean, there was a group of brave and clever men who were under the spell of three witches. The first witch was the witch of the land, who flew around everywhere with her small wings. The second witch was the witch of the sea, who flew from ships steaming in oceans far, far away. Uh, the third witch was just a fat witch who actually learned how to take off and land vertically with her broom. The brave and clever men under the spell were obsessed by the three witches and they could not think of anything else. They abandoned their usual traits that served them well for decades and let them fall into neglect and despair. But one day, a shining night, well actually it was greenish, but okay, a shining night was summoned by a group of wise and old men to break the spell. And when the brave and clever man saw the night and what he could do, the spell was finally broken. They returned to their traditions, but being clever, they treated the witches fairly because the witches themselves meant no harm, and everybody lived happily thereafter. Sir, this is ridiculous. 63% of our audience is between 25 and 54 years old. Otis, just go with the flow, okay? J just go with the flow. In 2004, the United States Air Force made public the decision of not acquiring any new old aircraft anymore. In practice, that meant that they were focusing on the Joint Strike Fighter and on what was remaining of the F-22. After about two decades during which the Air Force has been basically obsessed by the F-35, there are signs that the tide is actually turning. During those two decades, the Air Force was ready to sacrifice everything to the F-35, but now there are signs of a more balanced approach. We have already discussed in another video the idea of a new, less stealthy, less sophisticated 4 generation fighter, which is supposed to replace part of the F-16 fleet. Actually, a good candidate could be the Su-75 Checkmate, but I doubt anyone would consider my proposal. But the change of tack is actually older than that. Three years ago, under political pressure, the service made the decision of acquiring the new F-15 EX. Basically ready-made. Practically a while-you-wait delivery. We all have been impressed by the pictures of the F-15X being overloaded by weapons. Well, the common narrative is that the aircraft is going to act as a sort of a weapon truck shooting at long distance to the targets that are going to be designated by the F-35. And this narrative is not wrong, but there is much more going on around the acquisition of the F-15EX. Let's unpack it. The F-15EX has been derived from the versions of the F-15E that have been developed for foreign customers in the last two decades, adding some US-only features. In terms of performances and aerodynamics, it is not particularly different than a regular F-15E, but structurally it has been rated for 20,000 hours of useful lifetime which is a very, very long time. It is three or four times the design durations of other designs. If you consider that aircraft can be brought back to zero hour condition at least once in their lifetime, we may definitely infer that the F-15EX is going to stay in the Air Force inventory for a very, very long time. More on this later in the video. The radar being installed is the APG-82, which is a modern AESA radar that is also being retrofitted on the existing F-15E. 
This radar is actually an evolution of the APG-79 installed on the Super Hornet and the APG-63 V3 installed on the current F-15 C and D. Compared to its predecessors, this radar has much more computing power and it is expected to generate a track or filter out jamming much quicker than the previous models. However, the most interesting feature is the new self-protection suit called a, a, pa, a, pa, a pause, a, a, yeah, that, that, that one. In fact, the F-15X can be told from a normal F-15E by the different sensors on the tail. The suit is completely automated and this is not great news, but in this case it makes use of artificial intelligent algorithms to react to unknown threats. An automated protection suite uses the input of the sensors to react to a threat. They classify the threat against a library and then they react according to what has been previously determined to be the best way. A system like this uses radio and radar sensors, infrared sensor, ultraviolet sensors, and they control electronic jammers, decoys, chuffs and flares. Automation is actually a necessity because the complexity of the task would quickly overwhelm the pilot. But you may have noticed a weak point. What happens if the threat is not in the library? Well, with the old generation systems, nothing happened really. With modern systems, the closely fitting threat is actually identified, but the reaction could be a completely wrong thing to do. With the F-15EX, the system uses artificial intelligence algorithms to improve the response. In practice, the system may be trained to guess what it is up against and identify a reply that has never been uh, defined beforehand. If it works, it is a great improvement, particularly in the context of a large confrontation where both sides evolve and react to the opponent's moves. The F-15EX has been acquired to replace the F-15 C and D currently in service with the United States Air Force. And indeed, this is the plan. The current fleet of F-15 C and D is actually approaching the end of its life and it is quickly developing a lot of structural problems, so many aircraft are actually grounded. The F-15EX is expected to execute the same air superiority missions of the current F-15s and crucially it is expected to do that at half the cost of the F-35. If the acquisition cost is roughly the same of an F-35A, the running costs are much, much lower. Furthermore, there is a huge commonality between the existing infrastructures and what is required to support the F-15EX, and that is quite a large saving. The F-15X, despite being based on an old design, is a modern platform, perfectly adequate for many years to come. Some analysts are concerned about the survivability of the aircraft in the current environment because of lack of stealth. However, in a large-scale confrontation like the one the Air Force needs to be ready for, losses are going to happen. The fact that the loss of an aircraft will not have the huge psychological and material impact of the loss of a stealth aircraft at the end of the day, is actually an advantage. About the weapon track role, well, I'm actually allowing myself to have some perplexities. While well, actually it has been tested and it is an idea that may have legs, particularly when the new generation of air-to-air -air long-range missiles are going to enter service. My perplexity derives from the fact that this idea is openly in contrast with the new doctrine of distributed lethality that together with multi-domain operations is now becoming the core of the United States Air Force doctrine. 
I honestly doubt that we will ever see the F-15EX with 22 AMRAMs in any real operation, but definitely we will see mixed packages with F-35s and F-15EX. With the F-22 being retired by the end of the 20s, the air superiority mission of the F-15EX will become even more important. Yes, because the replacement of the F-22 will be the new NGAD platform, but there are good reason to expect that it won't be really available and operational by the end of the 20s. So the F-15EX will find itself probably filling the gap for a few years. But there is more. The F-15E today is an asset in great demand and it is not difficult to understand why. The air-to-ground capabilities of the F-15E are still unrivaled in terms of payload and versatility. The aircraft can be used as a weapon track in permissive environments like it's happening today in the conflicts currently ongoing. It can be used to deliver a large range of standoff weapons and it is also suited for low-level penetration missions even though the Air Force prefer not to follow this course of action. The F-15E fleet is still relatively in good shape, but it is not getting any younger, and probably it will require a replacement in the 2030s. The F-15EX is ideally positioned to cover this role. The aircraft has been developed from the F-15E, and it retains the same features. In, in particular, it retains the second seat, which is not expected to be occupied in air-to-air -air missions. And this is actually quite an interesting point, because usually automation is assumed to make the weapon system officers obsolete, but not everybody agrees. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the F-15EX replacing the F-15E while the NGAD is entering service and picks up the air-to-air -air role. The airframe has demonstrated of accommodating the improvements very well, and with such a long structural life, this definitely should not be a problem. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised to see further acquisitions of F-15EX down the line. Well, I'm sure that at this point many of you will be asking, but why we really need an F-15EX for air to ground? After all, the F-35 has been designed exactly with those missions in mind. Air to ground is the primary mission of the F-35. Well, the F-15EX has twice the payload, longer range, and crucially, it can transport large weapons, like the zoo of air-to-ground weapons that we have seen in the recent years. It will be the only platform capable of operating the new hypersonic weapons that are probably going to be quite large, well, apart the B-52, which can transport everything, everywhere, at any time, and forever, but this is a different subject. Remember that B-1 and B-2 will be replaced by the new B-21. And indeed, there is no doubt that the hypersonic weapons are going to play a crucial role in future conflicts. And we have an entire series uh, dedicated to the hypersonic flight. And if you're interested, click the videos that are going to appear beside me. And I'll see you there.